Hi, it's Professor Family here of Widener Law Commonwealth, and we're going to chat for just a little bit about administrative law. Now, I know you may be thinking, wait a minute, I signed up for immigration law. Why am I watching a video about administrative law? And the answer is that administrative law is all about the laws that govern the actions of all federal agencies, including the immigration agencies. So immigration law is mostly implemented by federal administrative agencies, which means they are guided by and bound to the general administrative law principles that apply to all federal agencies. So it's helpful to at least have this little short background to understand why we might think about administrative law in immigration law. And you'll see, hopefully, after watching this video, it will help you sort of pick out some of the administrative law issues that you're learning, even though you're learning them through an immigration law lens. So administrative law is a key tool in immigration law because administrative law at its core, in at least a litigation sense, is about what, if anything, did an agency do wrong in making a particular decision that it did um, or in a particular adjudication, uh, what did it do wrong? And so in immigration law, we want to be able to make those arguments, right? If we think that a federal agency did something wrong in implementing immigration law, we want to know what arguments can we make in court to challenge that. So I thought it would be helpful to just quickly go over uh, the sources of administrative law. So these are the legal sources that govern the behavior of federal agencies, again, including the immigration agencies. So we have the Constitution, of course, um, one part of the Constitution, although it's not the only part, but one very prominent part of the Constitution in administrative law is the Due Process Clause, right? The government is not supposed to deprive anyone of any person, I should say, not just citizens, of due process. Um, uh, I'm sorry, it's not supposed to deprive anyone, including uh, non-citizens, of life, liberty, or property without providing due process of law. Um, and then we also have legal sources that govern the behavior of administrative agencies that come from Congress itself, the legislative branch. So Congress has passed a statute called the Administrative Procedures Act, or the APA, which is a set of rules that govern the behavior of all federal administrative agencies. So you can think of the APA as sort of the mothership. It's sort of a general set of rules that apply to all agencies. Except we have to be careful because sometimes for specific agencies, Congress has said, hey, don't follow what the APA says. Instead, do this. And so Congress often accomplishes something like that through what we call in administrative law an organic statute. So the Immigration and Nationality Act is an example of an organic statute where Congress is delegating authority and duties to a federal administrative agency or agencies and at times may instruct them to do things that are a little bit different than what's provided in the Administrative Procedure Act. So um, we just have to be careful and make sure no matter what area of administrative law we're looking at um, that we check the organic statute to make sure it doesn't say anything different from the APA. And it's possible, um, in fact quite frequent, that agencies will be subject to some provisions from the APA and some from their organic statute. Um, let's go to the executive next. So the executive branch um, houses federal uh, administrative agencies and the executive branch has some control over those administrative agencies that sit within it. So for example, the White House can issue an executive order that applies to administrative agencies. Agencies themselves can develop regulations that tell itself what to do or how to handle or interpret a particular situation. Um, and agencies also have the power to make rules through what we call sub-regulatory documents or guidance documents. Now, these are not notice and comment regulations. 
They don't have the force of law. And I mention them because guidance documents are used a lot in immigration law. And so often an issue in litigation is, was this rule created appropriately through using a guidance document or should it have been um, created through a notice and comment regulation? The judicial branch, of course, um, writes opinions. And sometimes in those opinions, they clarify and explain what these other sources of law tell agencies to do. So those are the sources of administrative law generally, and these apply to the federal immigration agencies as well. What do agencies do? Well, they do all three of these things. Adjudication, sometimes they act like courts, right? You'll see how sometimes the immigration agencies are deciding whether to deport someone or whether to give someone a particular immigration benefit. They make rules. Um, they interpret, they act more like a legislature sometimes in that they interpret what um, a particular statute means. And so, and a rule can come, as I mentioned, either in the form of a notice and comment rule, which is legally binding, or a guidance document, which uses uh, fewer required procedures, which is not supposed to be legally binding. Um, and agencies also investigate, but for the most part in administrative law and in immigration law, the adjudication and rulemaking are the two most important functions. So just to sum up, um, here are some suggestions that I have for reading immigration law cases with administrative law in mind. And again, just keep in mind that the whole purpose of administrative law is to provide a set of standards and expectations for how agencies act. And if they violate um, something that a legal source tells them to do, then we can litigate and say that the administrative agency did something wrong and therefore their action is invalid. So you want to ask yourself, what type of agency action um, is being challenged? Um, is there judicial review? So one thing we have to remember in administrative law is there isn't always court review over agency actions. And as you'll see in your immigration law class, that is true in immigration law. Some immigration law agency decisions are just not subject to court review. But if there is judicial review, what source of administrative law applies? Um, is it the Constitution? Is it a statute like the APA or an organic statute? like the INA? Is it a regulation? Is it something else? Um, that's important because depending on what type of agency action you're challenging, that's going to determine what the standard of review is, the lens that the court will use to review the agency action. How much deference will the court show to the agency action? So for example, um, if you are talking about um, an agency conclusion of law, right, if you're challenging, if you're saying an agency misinterpreted a statute, um, that is going to get a different standard of review than if you're arguing um, that the agency made a mistake of fact, right, or um, if you're arguing that the agency failed to follow some procedural obligation it had or it failed to think about a problem in the right way or the way that the APA demands that it did, um, then a different standard of review is going to apply. So I hope this is a helpful introduction. Um, good luck in your study of immigration law.